Okay. And they are now building off the same exact look, right? We're calling this the flush look again. But now we call, hey, we're going to call flush, for example, nickel. Okay. We're now running a nickel sim from the where? Field. This will now affect the alignment of possible guys in the front. Here, um, I try to keep it a little bit more simple where I wanted the same exact alignments for my boundary outside B, which is the X, my boundary uh, will, for example. Okay. And my boundary safety will still show his boundary blitz look and then bail off to the post. And that's what I'm talking about where I want to change some of these designs on these Sims uh, this spring. Okay. Because I just don't like some of the radical rotation. Don't always like this post bailing way out of here from so far. I feel like it does it's a, a little bit of a disservice sometimes just based off of him. What the one thing we changed on this previous look now that it comes back and jogging back into my memory. Okay. We, I referred to this guy as our boundary outside backer, right? Well, this was an old playbook from 2017. All right. When we installed this package at Florida Tech, we um, put a lot on them. I wasn't trying to put so much on my guys each week this year. So I took this guy right here and I made him now what we call our rush, our boundary outside end. Okay. Our normal five technique. What was he doing in the boundary blitz? Well, he was running a heels face under all the time. So what should I want? What do I want him to do with the field blitz? Well, I want him doing the exact same thing he did in the boundary blitz, right? I want, I don't want to put too much on him. If he's already um, struggling with certain things, I don't want to make him struggle with anything more. So, Hey, these two new calls you have this week, man, you got the same exact responsibility. All right. On nickel, you now line up to the B gaps of the field, run your heels face under and the Saturn, you now line up to the B gaps of the boundary, run your heels face under. Okay. These are the two tags you're going to get the three man pick game or a two man pick game. All right. What position may struggle with overload of install or new calls, just they get stressed out easily. Well, build your package around those guys that may struggle a little bit and bring the best out in them. So again, this is now our boundary outside backer. Again, don't give these guys too much credit up front. Okay. Don't get protections. O-line coaches too much credit up front. Again, you got these big piggies trying to make fast decisions with a bunch of moving parts in front of them. They do not always recognize that, hey, oh, this new this boundary end is now all of a sudden the B-gap player to the field. He's for sure coming. These guys are for sure dropping. They don't always recognize numbers, okay? No matter what, we versus a three-remove look, we were always going to bring our nickel sim, uh, which we got more and more reps at throughout the year. Uh, for example, if we were bringing a five-man pressure uh, out of the odd world, like an NCAA with a true nickel and a mic coming, you know, long sticking, NCAA, three removes, swap it out to the two inside Bs. We said, hey, man, if three's kind of cut, our hook curl player can relate, get to three pretty good, pretty easily because of his alignment. Let's still bring the nickel. We could swap out maybe the inside B, the front inside B with the backside inside B and now run the backside inside B through, okay, which I think does affect the offense a little bit more sometimes with a three remove roll, uh, just depending on where their slide is going. All right, this guy who's normally blitzing. Again, this is why I wouldn't mind swapping out the boundary blitz to the corner if there's a nub set because I know we like to call the corner fires to a nub set where there's no one removed um, where it will now – it would help this look and allow this guy to cheat his alignment back a little bit, allow this deep third corner to show as a tight nine technique kind of like Richard Sherman used to do versus a nub and then get to his third. It just helps this guy's alignment right here. This nickel is now going. This guy is now going to cap two. He's going to be the curl flat player on two. He's working a post, outside third, outside third. So now we're back into what? Middle close defense. Okay. For every every middle open call I have, we have, I would prefer to have a, a middle closed call to compensate for it, right? Because um, everyone's got middle open, middle closed beaters. Okay, these two guys and the threes and the fives, they're going to heels face what? Under, all right? My nose is going to heels face what? Under as an A-gap player. You are now working to a what? Hook, curl, a who? Three, which means their departure angle can now be flatter to get to the low inside hip, a who? Three. 
he needs to recognize, well, where's his who? Four. Okay, he's dropping off the back here. He can zone up and pivot, turn, and only drop 10, 12 yards deep. Why? Because you have a middle closed what? Safety. You have a cap to the roof. He is dropping right here like he's almost like a wall carry player, like we're playing a middle open coverage. Again, this is probably one of the first reps we ever got this thing. Okay, he'll square up, protect the backside cookies on something coming back from the where? Field. Okay, rotation. Look at that dramatic rotation. Again, I, I sometimes think it could be easy to see if their uh, QB's eyes are up. Here we have a little bit of a play action fake going on. Eyes are down, trying to sell it. He's coming down too far. I try to tell any safety cap in on a two. If you're playing a curl flat man, just sit flat footed at eight yards and snap down on things. Um, just you covering some space depth wise will uh, protect a whole shot throw or a seam throw uh, at that 18, 20 yard mark. Okay. Middle close. We're going back to what the divider rules are for corners and stuff and get ready to squeeze on the outside, hip a two on the seams. The safety, he comes down so far that he's panicking and now trying to man turn run. Here we go. We got another look at it. As you can see, we're trying to coach up this hook curl player backside who's now dropping off the back, back stays to his side, so he's not going to open up so fast a field. He knows something's going to have to come back late. All right, we missed the what? Heels face under, okay? And that's why you see we end up with two in the gap. Nose, don't be so fast to what? Take a big lateral first step. Again, we want forward steps on our first step we want them to get what depth in their pass sets then come under because our goal is to hold this tackle's eyes on the five as we're bringing the nickel all right we were talking about adding on this guy should not be so quick to add there's your whole shot throw this guy who's working to the hook curl of three, pack this thing up until you're able to pass, uh, deliver it to your three-up player on the backside. Okay, flush. Once again, here's your boundary outside B. Here's your five technique. I would change this alignment right here as we're coaching it up. Now you could line up and cheat like you're coming outside of this thing just so you could force this thing back inside. Okay, we still need to rotate this here. In fact, I don't even want to go too deep into that call. The rotation will still stay the same way. Here we go. Now we got it going the right way. All right, this is a 21 personnel look, right? So this is true. Like, hey, man, we're going to get down here. We're going to run look like we're actually running this thing, like with tag calls and stuff from previous uh, stuff I've shown you. Again, I, I try to get these guys as many looks as possible where I think uh, could be a good time to call this stuff. Attack pass protections. Okay, as they're dropping out as hook curl players, this allows them to sit a little bit flatter, less depth. Okay, he's got to work to his three up. He's going to have to carry this thing all the way back. But now it frees up the who? Hook curl player of who? Three. Well, look at two and three now going once two gets out of here. Now it allows him to what? Bite down a little bit on this QB scramble. Don't let this thing hit too hard without you being tighter to the line of scrimmage. Same thing here. He's trying to give him a, a himself an ability alignment to get to the post. Backside third corner, you always got to hunker down a little bit. All right, when you're playing tight thirds. I try not to call too many 3D 300s early on in games. Sometimes get away from that on the first series. And you'll always notice you're always going to be giving up a flat or a hitch. Um, the free access early on in games because your corners are still trying to uh, get settled into the game. So I try to really keep them in mind as I'm calling calls early in games. I don't want them to be too soft in the flats because, again, they're just trying to gain, uh, get settled, get comfortable, feel the speed of those receivers. Uh, while they're on the islands and then uh, get them comfortable, then let them get ready to sit down some hitches in the tight third world. 
Uh, they just, I just know that they're just trying to keep that ball inside and in front, not give up a big explosive early on in the game. All right, this is uh, where we actually got a good little decent look at this. We're running now uh, a tag for the three-man what pit game. Okay, we have a little MA here with our A gap player. Here's our B gap player, right? They we're going to try to create the three-man pick for our five. I don't like the five's alignment. He's too what? Tight. Okay. He's cheating in a little bit too much for me too. I want him cheating out a little bit too uh, further as well. He can now cheat his alignment out here with what? Too removed. Okay. And start getting a little bit more what? Depth on it. Again, right here, people would think we're just rolling weak cover three. Okay. And we talk about replacing the heels of the D-line when you run these five technique uh, pick games. We lose our uh, A-gap player on the pick. Okay, but going back to our five, right? He needs to what? Get vertical first, then come under. Whenever we call calls, my guys need to always know what type of play are we expecting? What are these calls built for? Is this a run call? Is this a pass call? So, again, uh, we corrected that on the get off because now look how far away he was on the rush. Hook curl player again, packed back in here. Okay, my other hook curl player, because he ends up being two by two. Don't drive the chump. Just shuffle across. Uh, go deep to shore on this thing. All right, that was our middle closed nickel sim off that same look. 